Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to a book video, as you can see. <laughs> we're gonna do a little bit of a wrap up and we're gonna do a to be read, a TBR. And then I've got a very, very special announcement at the end of the video. Yes, this has to do with the 15K subscribers. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a lot to get through, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is especially for you, the book readers, the people who love to read. I'm doing this one for you. Let's get started as to the books that I read this year so far up until now. Okay, let's get into All it. Right. So um, in this month, in meaning the month of January, it is February now as I filmed this. So in the month of January, I read four books. I read four books in the month of January. It was a little bit slow towards the end because I was reading a book for the Brown Skin Reads book club and that took me some time. I could have read at least another one or two extra but I couldn't. I couldn't. It's okay. But the first book that I read and completed in January is this. This is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and my goodness, my goodness. Okay, let's just, shall we put it there? so we can see her okay there she is she's pretty um the first book that i read was the vanishing half by brit bennett and my goodness what a fantastic way to start 2021 definitely a five out of five i'm not even gonna before i tell you everything about the book it is a five out of five for me one of my favorite books probably going to make it into one of my favorite books of the year. The Vanishing Half follows the story of two sisters who are born into a southern town in the 1960s called Mallard and it's a town that kind of doesn't really exist. It's not in it, it exists but it's not really on maps and things you know people don't really know about this town and they were born into this town two twin sisters and it's a town of very light-skinned black people very very light-skinned black people and these girls grow up and at around the age of 16 they decide to move to new orleans and start a whole entire different life um they have a very very big history of you know racism colorism is a very big point in this uh book and um, racism also just really really difficult topics but I love the fact that this book also has representation in it. Yes, transgender. Uh, there's a transgender character in this book. But it was one of my favorite, favorite books that addresses very serious topics, but within a story, within a... It's, it, it was just so full. It was just so full with character descriptions. Very, very atmospheric. So these girls move to New Orleans at around the age of 16. And at some point, they split apart and they take different trajectories. Trajectories for their lives. So, so one sister decides to take the whole uh, journey of, uh, you know, she's black and she follows the, her being black and she takes her own life journey. And then the other one decides to pass as white. This actually starts when she enrolls and, and uh, applies for a job and she gets the job and she decides to pass as white. So her life takes a completely different trajectory. Um, the book opens where one of the sisters, Desiree, decides to go back home to the town of Mallard. And when she gets there, she gets there with a young daughter who is very dark-skinned. So the daughter is the only one in the whole town that is dark-skinned. So you can imagine the talks, the this, you know, the, uh, you know. Um, but this story follows the lives of the two sisters. You get it from different perspectives, different points of view. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it because I feel like I would be spoiling it. The whole enjoyment of the book is to actually read what happens to the lives of these sisters, uh, given the different directions of life that they take. And, um, the other sister decides to pass as white. Stella decides to pass as white and has a white daughter, white husband, white daughter. And man, it is a beautiful, beautiful story. It's a beautiful telling of um, just generally how their lives unfolded in that time and what happened to actually bring them back together. Um, I, I don't want to say more than that. It's a really, really, really good book. And I highly recommend that you get this book. The writing is by far the best writing I have ever read in a book. I am not finna lie. I've read a lot of books, but this book 
has the best writing that I've ever read in a book and I was so 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 impressed with it that I decided to give it a five out of five very character descriptive um, I also love the fact that it alludes into even the side characters so even though we're focusing on Stella and Desiree but we also focus on Jude Desiree's daughter and Kennedy Stella's daughter and they have lives of their own and um, thoughts and opinions of their own when it comes to racism colorism and all of that stuff so so good I feel like each and every side character can have their own book like if Britt Bennett decided that I can take out a different book for Kennedy or for Jude I would I would be about it I would buy that book and I would read it so 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 impressed by this book so so good so so good Next, two books I read on I listened to on audio and I have an app called any play and I listened first to Freshwater by Akweke Emezi. So I'll put the picture here. Let's remove Britt Bennett. Thank you, Britt. Um, Freshwater, I'll put somewhere here so that you can see it. This is a book, oh my goodness, also another very well-written book. The prose is amazing. The words, the how they flow into one another, it's amazing. If you're not familiar with Akweke Emezi, I, I did speak about uh, when I read... Um, the Vivek book, which one is it? The Death of Vivek OG, and uh, that was my first Akweke Mezi book, and then I picked, I picked up, or rather listened to, ooh, it's quite cloudy outside, let's do this. And yeah, I absolutely, absolutely loved it. This follows the story of, oh my God, this, it's, it's going to be really hard for me to explain this book, but it's a really great book. And I rated this one again, another five out of five, purely because it's not very often that you uh, read any books on sort of African spirituality and mythology, maybe to some degree. This follows the story of um, Ada, who is known as a Obanje, or I'm not sure what the word is. It's Nigerian, so I'll write the word somewhere here. Essentially, it means that she's a single collective. So she is born to her parents, but she is born with spirits that are inside of her. And what happens is there's major, major trigger warnings for rape and suicide and um, sort of drug abuse as well in this book. But if you're somebody that doesn't want to read that kind of stuff, I really wouldn't suggest it. But if you can, I definitely highly recommend that you pick up this book because it follows her life and the struggles that she has dealing with these spirits that are within her that end up actually making her do things that she doesn't really want to do. Um, one of the spirits that are in within her, are uh, the name of the spirit is... Osugara, Osugara, if I'm not mistaken, and this spirit, um, as she grows up, as she she's born in Nigeria, but then to a, Mal a Malaysian mother and a Nigerian father, and as she grows up, of course, um, she grows up as you know a, quite a a problematic child, and it's funny because they don't really quite think, see that she's a Obanje or. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, and as she grows up, she goes to university in the States, in Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. And these spirits now are trying to control and run um, her and, and, and she can't quite control it. So what happens is one of the spirits, Osugara, makes her do really, really strange things. She sleeps with different men. She... Um, Oh man, it's it's really just so powerful. She sleeps with different men. The spirit doesn't like the fact that Ada is overweight, so forces her to actually work out and start eating right and all of that, and also forces her to cut her hair. Um, but at the same time, these two spirits, one of them is Osugara, the other one is St. Vincent. St. Vincent, on the other hand, is more softer uh, and, um, you know, is, is, it cares for uh, Ada. And they both do, but at the end of the day, they also feel like in order for her to be released of the pain of life that she is living right now, because of them, they need to kill her. It is a beautiful book. 
that is written so so well that I you can't even the, the the book reviews that I listened to and read with regards to this book it's very difficult to articulate this kind of book um, but it was a, a beautiful insight into African uh, traditions cultures a little bit of African uh, mythology as well weaved into that and I really really enjoyed this particular book and I do recommend it definitely 110% especially if you have read The Death of Vivek Oji I really highly recommend that you pick up this one which is um, uh, it was their debut novel if you're not familiar with Akweke Emezi she is non-binary well they identify as non-binary and of course you have to use pronouns like they and them so I definitely do suggest that you pick up this um, book and then the next book I read on audio again on any play is Grown by Tiffany D Jackson now now firstly this is a young adult novel and I do not read young adult novels I've only read uh, clap when you land and with the fire on high by um, Elizabeth Acevedo and those are young adult novels however this one I wanted to read because it is essentially a novelization of the R. Kelly saga so this follows the story of Enchanted her name is Enchanted and Enchanted is a 17 year old girl or 16 somewhere there 16 who loves water loves to swim but also loves music so one day she goes to an audition at the apollo theater or something like that in new york where she wants to audition to be a singer and all of that's like a bet live sensation kind of thing and when she is there she meets corey fields and corey fields is a 20 28 year old music sensation who's just so connected he's got many um artists and producer friends he's got his own record label he uh locks eyes with enchanted and starts doing everything in his power to get hold of her um you as the reader can actually see from the onset that this is there's something really wrong about this aside from the age difference between the two of course but you can actually see that there's something really wrong about the situation how he acts to her the things he says how uh bully and bossy he is around her tries to control her controls what she wears controls you know um again there's uh, trigger warnings here of um grooming there's trigger warnings of drug abuse and alcohol abuse um there's trigger warnings of rape and all those kinds of things so really really difficult if you're not somebody who um can handle that kind of um genre that kind of those kinds of tropes i really don't suggest you read this book however if you can it is a rather difficult book to read there were times where i was very upset listening to this book um but yes yeah, so it follows her story and her life with uh Corey Fields how that unfolds um really very very close to the T of what happens in the R Kelly saga uh with all the women um in uh R Kelly's life and all of that um so a really good book i really enjoyed this one it was thoroughly entertaining for a young adult novel um, I was my attention was kept uh, right throughout because I did want to see and know what would happen thereafter so um, rated this one a four out of five I did enjoy it I am not gonna lie I really really did enjoy it did enjoy it the last book that I read for January is this one this is love and color by Bolu Babalola if you do watch my channel you will know that I have been reading uh, this for the brown skin reads book club uh, book review for January and I really enjoyed it um, rated this one a three and a half out of five for me personally it wasn't fantastic but it was enjoyable I want to suggest that if you're somebody who wants to read about romance but you don't want to read the chick litty stuff the really cringe worthy stuff um the stuff that just it's a little bit too much um which for me it was because there is another book that i read after this one and i actually dnf'd it which i did not finish it that's what it means um i'll talk about that one a little bit after this one um so this one follows mythical tales so it's a collection of short stories that are 
from all parts of the world. So some of them are from uh, uh, Greece, some are from Nigeria, some are from Lesotho, some are from um, uh, just different parts of the world. And what she did is it's 13 short stories, nine of which are uh, mythical tales which she remastered and made them more enjoyable to read and actually more appropriate to read for the time that we are in right now uh, because a lot of them were written uh, with uh, patriarchal ideals in mind that whole ideology of m women submissing and you know and and all of that so she remastered the first nine old tales um, from actual mythical stories that have been told in the very the respective countries so i really really enjoyed uh some of the old tales some of them i just felt oh, well they're not necessary to be in the this book but it's a short collection of um stories that center around love and around black love and also around how you know as much as some of the women in these uh, stories all of the stories were focused on women but they were strong and it painted them in a really strong and positive and feminine light but also at the same time how love and black love in particular it can also um, be soft and it shows how it can be soft and a woman even in her strength and her prowess allows herself to be loved and the men give the women that platform that they can see that she is strong and she is um you know she's doing her thing but they also um are not intimidated by that and they're not faced by that absolutely loved that whole ideology for this short story collection those are the books that i did read for january read four books which is quite it's quite good if i can read about four or five books each month i'll be really happy with the number that i get to in december if i can manage that well i know some months are not going to be the same but i really really enjoyed i had a good month of reading this month meaning january so now i'm going to show you the books that i want to to be read um selection of books say for the next two months <laughs> two months Am I sure? Two months? I don't know. These are the books that I want to read in the next two months. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a short, short, very not detailed, high level uh, synopsis of each book. The first book is the book that I will be reading for February for the book club. And this is by Tahari Jones. Tayari. Tayari Jones. And this is Silver Sparrow. So Silver Sparrow follows the life of the Witherspoon family. And it follows the life of two sisters, one of which um, knows about the one sister and the other one doesn't. So it follows the life of this man, James Witherspoon, who gets married at a very young age and has a family. And as he gets older, he's a bigamist. So as he gets older, he actually has another family of which that is the hidden family and that the, the then there's the known family. And... Essentially, it follows the tale of how the story unfolds with these two different families and how the stories of the daughters who are sisters interweaves with one another. That's as far as I know with regards to this book. Really, really excited to read this and see where this one goes. And then the next book that I do want to read is this one, which is Where the Crawdads Sing. You may have seen all these books in my vlogs. And if you did, that is fantastic because then you don't have to, you can, you know. Um, and this book follows um, the life of the Marsh Girl by the name of Kaya. Um, this is a girl that grew up in a neighborhood called Barkley Cove, but she grew up in sort of the marshlands of that neighborhood alone. Uh, but when a young man by the name of Chase Andrews is found dead in that marsh area, uh, the locals of that town immediately assume that Kaya might have something to do with that. Um, so we follow that and how this unfolds along when two men from the very same town um, find some sort of interest in Kaya and her wild beauty, but she's actually quite smart and quite um, intelligent. And it follows, yeah, that whole story and how that all unfolds. 
Looking Another one that I'm really excited to read is this. You might have seen this in, again, one of my videos from last year. This is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Oh, this one is by Delia Owens. I'm sorry about that. This is by Stephen Graham Jones. And this follows a group of four young men. Is it four? Yes. And they went hunting and shot some elk in an area that is reserved for no hunting in a um, um, sort of like a, a Native American uh, reservation area that is not, no hunting should be happening there. And they essentially shoot an elk. And what happens afterwards is crazy. So essentially this entity that they shot, they refer to it as the entity, comes back for revenge on these four young men. So when they're older. So as they get older, things start happening at the hands of this entity that they shot. And I and I cannot wait. They are the ones that are being stalked. They stalked the elk then, and now they are being stalked by this entity that they shot down. So really, really excited. It is a horror novel, so it is quite frightening. But I cannot wait to read this. Something about this just keeps drawing me and pulling me to this book. So I want to read this one too. And then the last book that I want to read is The Push. Now this follows uh, the Connor family. And what happens in this book is that um, the mother has a daughter, has a young daughter, but cannot quite relate to this daughter. They move into a new home, if I'm not mistaken. But um, what happens is... The daughter is actually quite strange and the daughter actually doesn't like the mother and the mother quite doesn't like the daughter and really strange and funny things start to unfold in the home. Um, the husband says to his wife that, listen, you're just imagining all of these things. I mean, you know, you're probably going through a tough time with raising the kid and all of that. But the mother is just hell bent, believes that this daughter, there's something wrong with this kid. Uh, this book has been compared to baby teeth. Um, another novel where there's like this daughter who's kind of like cursed or is this something real, real wrong with the kid. So this is, yeah, I, I found the premise of this one quite interesting and I picked it up and hopefully I will get to it soon. I'm thinking I should read this one first actually, but we'll see. We'll so, see. I do want to talk to you guys about the 15K giveaway i specifically mentioned that with the 15k giveaway i am going to make it for the readers and yes i am yes 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 i am so i want to show you the books that i have picked up i have put some of them away but they are books that i have read so i can just pull them from here and show you what is going to be given away okay the first book is i cannot not Ooh, don't fall. I cannot not. So the first book is A Family Affair by Su Nyati. And then the second book is I cannot not. I cannot not. This is the girl with the louding voice. These two books are going to be part of the giveaway. And, and then the last book is The Death of Vivek Oji. So these are the three books that I'm going to be giving away for the 15k subscriber giveaway. I'm so, so excited for you guys to read these. These were all five star books for me and these are all African authors. Very, very important for me to do the first giveaway uh, for black women, except of course, um, Akweke Mezi who, um, identifies as non-binary so the two are women one is abby dari and one is sumyati and i'm going to be giving these away for and these are expensive books i could tell you that right now i'm going to be giving these away for the uh 15k giveaway so all you need to do to be able to enter this giveaway is one be following me on my instagram page and my youtube channel very very important hello very very important two you need to comment down below as to why you feel that you need to get this giveaway like you have to tell me why you feel that you need to get this giveaway and in the same response in the same comment you need to share with me your favorite book of all time because i'm looking to read new books and i would really really love to get your suggestions as to why why you like the book why it's your favorite book that's all you need to do 
follow me on Instagram and on uh, YouTube right here and then you need to like this video of course you have to like this video and then comment down below as to why you feel you should win this giveaway and what your favorite book of all time is what you would recommend me to read that's all that's all there is to it I hope you guys enjoyed this video this was my wrap up slash TBR slash giveaway announcement for um, this time around for 15k uh we'll do the next giveaway at 20k i really really hope to see you then until then i'll see you very very soon have a good one take care stay safe comment subscribe like do all the things click the bell and i'll see you in the next